four times and now I'm on. Y'all can hear me. Um, are they recording? Do I need to count down? Okay, good. All right, welcome to Rules, Confirmation, and Public Elections. Today is Thursday, June 15th. This is our special meeting because we have a lot of appointments tonight, um, but it seems less people in the audience, so that may make things go quicker. Um, what, how we're gonna go about this, because we have a lot, we do have some committees before we get to, uh, we, before we get to our music, film, and Entertainment Commission. And so we're gonna take those up first, uh, and then we're gonna just go through alphabetical order for the uh, for that commission. We do have a quorum. I know I've got, thank you, Rosie. I know I've got some council members coming in and out, um, and we'll just take questions. Council members, just um, raise your hand and I'll make a cue. Thank you so much. Um, anybody have questions before we get going? All right, so we're gonna, and oh, what we'll do is so uh, uh, nominations, nominees, if y'all just go to the mic that's um, behind Councilman Rutherford. Uh, Councilman Rutherford, raise your hand so they know. Yes, thank you. Um, that's where we'll, we'll take y'all instead of shuffling everybody up and through um, up here. So, all right. And you will also notice that I'm asking everybody uh, three questions and we'll just go ahead and um, get that out of the way. Uh, if all nominees, so all the nominees that are sitting out there, if you uh, answer no to these, I guess, raise your hand if you, it's a no to, are you a registered voter? Great. Do you live in Davidson County? That should be a yes. It, yes, yeah, okay. If it's a no, then raise your hand. All right, and then do you serve on any other boards or commissions in Nashville? Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna start with Stormwater Management Committee appointment of Ms. Brittany Simpson for the term expiring October 31st, 2027. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Um, let's see here, so why would you like to serve on the Stormwater Committee? Go ahead. Uh, it's a personal goal of mine to always be involved in a civic organization. Um, I have rolled off a previous nonprofit board and really want to give back to the community. Um, my current position, I'm the EPC and Procurement Council at Silicon Ranch Corporation, and so I deal with construction matters and involving stormwater. Um, and so I thought my skill set would fit very well with this committee, and I was contacted by some members of the Nashville Bar who asked if... I'd be interested and I very much am, which is why I'm here. Great, questions? Any questions for Ms. Simpson? All right. Um, Do you ever go through the stormwater committee, do any of your projects? I did not. So um, your company doesn't? No, uh, we do uh, solar facilities across the United States. Um, I do a lot of uh, solar facilities in the Southeast, but we haven't had any in Metro Davidson County. We have had them throughout Tennessee, so I am familiar with the general NPDES permitting process with TDEC, but we have not had anything directly here in Davidson County that I've worked on. And any, if if your company does have any or any of your, any projects that you work on do come before the commission, would you be um, recusing yourself? Yes, I would recuse myself. And I, I added that in the application as well. We have nothing uh, that I'm currently aware of that would be in front of the committee or in Davidson County, but I would be providing notice and recusing myself um, per the conflict uh, requirements that we have. Okay, all right, um, all those in favor? Any against, any abstentions? All right, we will um, see you next Tuesday, right? Would they have to come Tuesday? Right? Okay, okay, so if you wanna be recognized at the meeting, come on back on Tuesday. Um, otherwise, I think you can, can skip coming back down here. Also, do we have parking tickets for them somewhere? Parking yeah, passes, you right get those? Here. Okay, great. Yep. Parking passes, please take one of those unless you rode the bus and we appreciate your ridership. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Okay. We're five members. Great. 
Okay, so next we're gonna go to NECAT, which, uh, so Nashville Education, Community, Arts, and Television appointment of Mr. Jeremy Mercer for a term expiring April 2nd, 2026. Madam Chair, if I may be heard, uh, Tom Jerkovich from the mayor's office. Uh, Mr. Mercer uh, is unable to make it tonight, and we, we respectfully ask for a deferral until the uh, July 6th council meeting. You know offhand when his letter was sent to the council? Uh, I don't, I'm sorry. Do you think it was, um, the, do you have it, Margaret, by chance? Okay. And I'd also note that uh, Mr. Uh, Jerome Moore, uh, he was, uh, uh, could not make it tonight either and has been reserved one of the handful of slots for uh, the July 20th uh, uh, committee meeting. So neither of them will be here today. All right, June 2nd, so that doesn't make it an automatic, right? Okay, we're good there. Who, the other name you said was? Uh, Jerome Moore, also with NECAT. So Mr. Uh, I don't have another NECAT appointment. I don't have another NECAT on my agenda, but I do have their, he, it says he was interviewed on, the, on June 20th. Uh, I think it's, if you're talking about Mr. Moore, Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes. He is scheduled for June twentieth. That's correct. So I guess the uh, the clerk took it off. For Not me. on my agenda. Okay. That, that's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is. Do y'all have any other deferrals or withdrawals? Uh, it looks like uh, with respect on the on the film, uh, uh, the uh, music film and entertainment commission, uh, Ms. Hazel Smith is going to be deferred to July six. She could not make it either. Okay. All right. So I'm making a motion to defer um, the NECAT appointment of Mr. Jeremy Mercer and the, um, there's, this is just not, this acronym's a little crazy too, the, uh, the, the Film and Entertainment Commission, um, you should wordsmith that, Councilman, Council Lady Stiles, um, for Ms. Hazel Smith, they are both going to be deferred to our next meeting. Yes, thank you. All those in favor, any against, any abstentions. All right, with that, we are moving forward to Parks and Rec. So, um, reappointment of Ms. Susanna Scott Barnes for a term expiring on April 30th, 2028. Hey, Susanna. Um, tell us why you would like to be reappointed. Um, well, I am a native Nashvillian and having served on the Parks Board for the past five years, I really appreciate the value of parks um, more than ever and see the value of open space and public land and especially would be interested in continuing to um, work as in, in, the, in governance and to improve processes um, and just give back to the community. Great, thank you. Um, recently it came before, there was discussion at the board to move the downtown New Year's Eve celebration from uh, Bicentennial Mall to Centennial Park. Can you tell us what, what you thought of that proposal? Well, I, the, that has been deferred. Uh, well, sorry, it was deferred and then withdrawn. He's withdrawn now, yes. So it's not before us. Um, I think in, in my style as um, a parks board member in the past has just been to ask a lot of questions, gather a lot of data. Um, and that's when it came before us and we had a chance to meet with the representatives. Um, that, that was, I, you know, that was kind of what I did, asked a lot of questions. Okay, great. Any questions from the committee? Councilman Pulley? <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Murphy. Um, as we know, with uh, boards and commissions, especially boards like the Parks Board, it takes a lot of persistence and determination to plow through some of the issues that we deal with. And I uh, wanted to bring up one of uh, Susanna Scott Barnes skill sets that she humbly doesn't like to talk about. And uh, she did take five months out of her life and started on the Appalachian Trail and did not leave it until she hiked from one end of it to the other, which 
I think some impressive skill set she brings with us. <laughs> so I think what you're saying is she has the ability to sit through long meetings probably then? <laughs> I think, and she has the ability to deal with uh, rules like you. Mm -hmm. Those are, that's, so I think, um, Ms. Barnes, I don't think it's, it's too late to start a write-in campaign for council because those are two of the qualifications to be <laughs> on council as well. So It is true. I did. I'm a through, AT through hiker, but it was a long, long time ago. <laughs> well, I know your commitment to public land, um, obviously, through your through your private work and, and um, not always so public, and I appreciate it. Um, and preserving in our own little neighborhood although you've left our neighborhood, that's okay. Um, with that, I make a motion for approval. All in favor, any against, any abstentions? Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to Planning Commission of Mr. Matthew Smith for a term expiring March 31st, 2027. And we also have the Planning Commission appointment of Mr. Denny Marshall for a term expiring on March 31st, 2027 as well. So we'll take those up together. All right. And um, Mr. Smith, I know you've been before us already, um, but appreciate you coming back because typically a lot of the questions that we have um, in that discussion, it's it's good and important to have, if we're having people appointed at the same time to kind of have that discussion um, open together. And I know that there are some council members who wanted to ask further questions and they, they weren't able to be here today. And so some of them have been funneled probably to others, hopefully that are here. So. Um, Mr. Marshall, why don't you tell us why uh, you think you are qualified to serve on the Planning Commission? Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak to you all. First of all, I am, I've lived here in Nashville since 1974. I worked in the financial industry for over 43 years and 37 of that being a mortgage banker uh, with our local banks here in the city. I've had the opportunity to see this city grow from what it was in the early 70s to what it is right now. I bring to this committee a sensitivity of both sides of the equation. I was involved in, number one, putting together a subdivision uh, back in 27 years ago. So understanding what developers and builders and all of them go through, but I also am on the consumer side of it, understanding what the consumer feels and how they do want to protect, you know, their areas, their neighborhoods and things of that nature. I think I bring that type of sensitivity to the uh, table and I bring that to the table with uh, uh, background uh, education in the business environment, and then also I bring the West Tennessee common sense approach to making decisions. So I think that I could serve the committee well by bringing a diverse, you know, uh, feelings, diverse opinions, uh, diverse look and look at looking at the picture. I have a good feeling of what's going on in the city uh, because of what I do. And so I think I could serve the committee very well from that standpoint. Um, Mr. Uh, Marshall, District 1 is is where you live, correct? Right? That is correct. Yes. So that's a district that I think over my eight years has had a lot of back and forth about um, development and the community plan um, and, and residents sometimes feeling like they're not heard. Yes. Um, do you have any thoughts on that or want to share any more about that? Well, no, I, I think that I would be perfect helping them to feel, get that balance of why things need to be done, what type of rooftops we need in the community, why you need certain type of um, commercial developments and things of that nature. At the same time, respecting the fact that you know, these are very established communities with very tight-knit people that have their feelings about where they want to live. So I understand both sides of that, and I have no problem at all dealing with it. And I work in the financing industry, the mortgage industry, and so I'm talking to people all the time about, you know, 
what it takes to move forward from a financial standpoint, from a development standpoint, from the home ownership standpoint. So I'm, I'm very sensitive to that. Council Lady Hancock. Wait, wait. It's been a hot minute since I've looked at us backwards. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have any experience with the National Next policy, it was um, put in place about a decade ago, and I was just wondering if you were involved in that. Not to, not involved directly with it, but I'm aware of it very much. I've attended meetings, you know, around it, so I'm very aware of it, but not directly involved in it. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Rutherford. You don't have any questions? Council Lady Lee. Rosenberg. Um, let me let me ask another question um, before we do that. Um, do you foresee any any projects that Regions is involved with coming before the Planning Commission? Well, uh I, I don't force, I do foresee it possibly because that is what we do. But if that was the case, I would certainly rescue myself, you know, from making any type of decisions around it. But, um, you know, I, I don't think that it would be something that would be hard for me to, you know, deal with and reason through it and work through it in an ethical kind of way. Okay, and so if you would recuse yourself from the vote, would you also recuse yourself from if someone on that, on the development team um, asked you for advice about Nashville Next, the commission's application of Nashville Next, or uh, maybe the arguments that go before the commissioners, would you also not participate in giving that advice to colleagues? Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, again, I try to operate from a standpoint of ethics and from a standpoint of common sense, you know, in other words, you know, I'm not going to offer information that shouldn't be offered, you know. I'm going to certainly protect the uh, integrity of the commission and what the position is that I'm there to do. Okay. All right. So um, we've got Councilman Rosenberg's motion to approve. It is seconded. All those in favor? And this is on Mr. Um, Marshall. And um, all those in favor, yes. All those against, any abstentions? Okay. Um, and so, thank you. We will um, see you soon. Right, um, you. Mr. Smith, I'm gonna ask you that same question that, that I just finished up with Mr. Marshall about. I know that when we talked before, um, the the issue of, of your involvement with the Home Builders Association had come up and you had said that you would recuse yourself, um, but, that issue has been brought up to to several council members via email, lots of concerns expressed about that. Um, and and so you've said you recuse yourself, but the same question that I just asked Mr. Marshall of, would you be, if someone came to you as a colleague, as a friend, um, you know, and said, which commissioners are likely to go this way or that way, or what do you think of this policy or, you know, um, what is what is kind of your interpretation of that uh, of Nashville Next, or should we should we change our application in some way to be more likable, um, more pleasing? What what have you? What what? How would you handle that? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to uh, say since our last meeting, I've actually resigned my membership in the uh, Home Builders Association. I uh, hope to avoid any conflict of interest. Uh, that being said, <clears throat> I I I would agree with the previous. Uh, soon to be uh, commissioner, uh, I would have no problem in uh, recusing myself personally uh, from the commission and also uh, would try to operate from a, the highest level of, of ethically, uh, ethical behavior and, and not giving out any untoward uh, information or inside baseball knowledge that would be inappropriate. Uh, my loyalty and duty would be to the commission uh, above above all things during my term. And so you've resigned your um, membership. 
are you planning on can you know staying out of those types of trade associations for the remainder of your time on the planning commission yes. for this term and should you be appointed in the reappointed in the future yes ma'am okay and that's for this trade association and similar you would do that you would not join any new um memberships to similar trade associations I, I, I have no plans to and have no problem saying i wouldn't okay um let's see here council Lady hancock Same question as before, are you familiar with the Nashville Next policy and have you been involved in its um, creation? Uh, I have not been involved in its creation. I am, uh, I am familiar with it, uh, just as having you know, read it. Rutherford. Working in the, um, it's in the development uh, you've expressed that you would recuse yourself if there was obviously something before the commission um, that you were involved in. But if, if um, items that you're not involved in that come before the commission, how would your how would your work, your experience, influence your um, decision making on the commission? Um, well, I hope that's that's part of uh, why I was nominated. Uh, I think my experience in having navigated that uh, in this city and others would hopefully be a boon in uh, being able to know what developers can afford uh, to uh, add and subtract and, and modify and how best to try to incorporate uh, neighborhood feedback and uh, community concerns and, and city concerns. Thank you. Uh, Rosenberg, Council Lady Lee, Council Lady Stiles, Councilman Pulley. Y'all come to my committee, I'm calling on you. <laughs> I mean, we all have things that go before planning. I'll just make one statement similar to what I did. I said at the last rules committee meeting, because uh, one of the great things about our boards and commissions is uh, we try to achieve balance and uh, balance between neighborhoods, balance between communities and balance between professionals and attorneys. And uh, uh, I have had experience in my district as this council member dealing with Matt and his organization, uh, Orion Smith, they're residential developers. And one of the things that's impressive is that they very, they're very easy to work with from a community perspective. They're ethical. I found them when uh, community concerns are brought, I found them to be very responsive to the point at which uh, they, they listen to the community and the council member about whether or not to even be involved in certain things based on that feedback. So uh, I think that his organization and Matt have held themselves uh, to the highest level of integrity and to put somebody from the development community on the Planet Commission, those are the kind of people that we need. So uh, I would wholeheartedly recommend Matt's uh, nominate, uh, uh, confirmation to this position. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence, Madam Chair. All right, looking for a motion. We've got a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, we will, um, you don't have to come back. <laughs> I don't have to see, <laughs> we will see you at the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Sorry, I'm used to saying we'll see you in the, in the larger room and so this is, uh, change in format. All right, so we've got public library board reappointment of Mr. Robert um, Orman, is that correct? Okay, um, for a term expiring April 6, 2030. Tell us um, what you have enjoyed about serving on the library board and why you wanna do it again. Well, I'm the only person with a library degree who serves on the board. I'm also the only author on the board. I have nine books in the collection, so I have a vested interest in the library. Um, and thirdly, we are in the middle of searching for a new uh, 
library director, and since we're in the middle of that process, I feel it uh, important that we stay together as a board, uh, a unified board on, on the search. Uh, and I think my fellow board members would agree with me on that. Um, that's our main order of business right now, is to ensure that we uh, in, uh, secure the future of the library with a great director. And I'm all, I helped to hire the last one. I'm gonna help to hire this one, I hope. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, Council Lady Hancock. Um, what is your opinion on how we are currently serving the community with libraries? Do you think we have the right number? Too many, too few? I, I, out in the community, I can only speak from, um, from anecdotal experience, but people love their local libraries. And those of you who live in a district that has a library, I'm sure you know how much the patrons are using them and loving them. Our after school programs are incredibly popular with parents and kids. And uh, we'd always like to have more, of course, but that's money. <laughs> But uh, right now we're building a beautiful new facility for Donaldson uh, that will be opening next year. And uh, it's a two-story facility with parking. And uh, it's a, gonna be a beautiful space. And we've all, during my term at, at, on the library board, we've opened a new branch in Bellevue as well and renovated three of our, our libraries. And we're still maintaining two of our historic ones too. Our two Carnegie libraries are still in existence in North Nashville and in East Nashville. I love the libraries. Thank you, I love them too. And I appreciate your judicial use of funds. Thank you. Rutherford. Rosenberg. Hey, thank you for your service to the city and to the board and support for the libraries. Um, I don't know if this is something that crosses the board, but do you happen to know what the status is of getting a manager for the Bellevue branch? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But I can bring it up with Terry. <laughs> I appreciate that. I just haven't gotten an update in a while. I'm curious. It's a great branch. and I, I, It is a great thank, branch. Yeah, appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Council Lady Lee. Styles. Holy. All right. Um, I would like to put you in the hot seat about Richland Library, but I know that is a funding issue out of the administration. I support um, and appreciate the, the fact that the board has been supportive of Richland Library, which is one of our um, smallest yet highest use branches. And so this is my last chance of a soapbox and plea for council members who are still in the room and coming back. Richland Library has been top of the funding list and has been given um, the green light for planning and construction money, yet has not been fully funded by administrations. Correct. So please, council members who are coming back, fund our, if you love our libraries, fund them. And, and, and bear in mind that libraries constantly need maintenance you know, new carpets, new, new thing, you know, they're used and things that get used, get used up. You need to keep updating your libraries. Yeah. And that's a very crucial part of our budget every year. Yeah, and I also love that they have, um, our libraries are not um, just a dusty bookshelf. The, the fact that the, the programming that has been encouraged by the local branches is just above and beyond what I would expect of libraries. And so I really appreciate that. Um, and any continued to, you know, if y'all continue to give local branches the leeway to do that, I think that's great. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve. Seconded, all those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, thank you so much. Thank service. you. Okay, so we are now on to our Film and Entertainment Commission, right? Okay. Okay, so we are gonna go, um, let's see how we have this on here. Are these, these are alphabetical, is that correct? And then we're taking, we're taking, okay. Okay, so we're taking mayoral appointees first, and then it does appear to kind of go into alphabetical order after the um, the slotted positions. So let me run through, just because uh, it's been a minute since we've passed this legislation. So this commission overall is gonna have 15 members. This is the first time that we're appointing commissioners, right? So four of them are gonna be appointed by the mayor, 
Three are nominated by, um, by ourselves, by council members. Four members nominated from the entertainment industry at large. One is selected by the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees from its membership. One is selected from the Screen Actors Guild, the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists uh, from its membership. One is from the American Federation of Musicians from its membership. And one is from the Recording Academy Nashville chapter from its membership. So that takes us to those, um, the mayoral and those are all slotted in. And then we have the seven that, um, that will come from the rest of the list. So we'll start with Mr. Ken Leviton. And then we're gonna have Mr. Willie Sims. And then we're gonna have Miss Sarah Trey Hearn. So if y'all wanna just go ahead and line up. Uh -oh. uh, Madam Chair, if I may, uh, Mr. Levitan uh, is not here. <clears throat> I've, I've reached out to him. I've not heard back. He did do his questionnaire. Uh, I suspect something happened. Uh, 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 unless like he shows up, we would heel? move to defer him to July okay. 6th. We'll, re we'll roll him at this point okay. to the end. Okay. Council Lady Styles, for what purpose? Just for clarification, Chair, I do believe that Mr. Levitan is coming on Tuesday, if, in case he does show up today, but I believe he's coming on Tuesday. Okay. Thank you, Council Lady Styles, for You're welcome, well Chair. Um, all right, with that, then we'll, roll, we'll go ahead and move to defer him. You want me to wait? Okay, just a second. And while, while they're looking that up, we are also going to move um, Miss Edwards to the end. She's not here. She's in, I think she's en route. So um, we're going to roll her to the heel in case she can make it. And if not, we will um, deal with it then. So um, while we figure out about Mr. Leviton, Mr. Willie Sims, explain to us why you are leaving NECAT to go to this new commission. Uh, I am leaving NECAT to go to this new commission because I believe this commission is going to affect even what happens with NECAT and with all of the, I guess, the people in Nashville that will be here, the creative people, and, you know, make sure that it's still looking out for Nashvilleans, as well as bringing people from outside and add my two cents. And I believe when you came before the committee before, we had um, pretty humorous two cents. Did we really? Yeah, I think so. I, oh, I remember no. that. Yeah, we had a good time. Okay, then um, we had a good time. Who, we who had a good time this time, too. You work for somebody like Mr. Who, who do you work for again? Uh, I work for the Lord. <laughs> no. Nah, that was part of it. That could yeah, be part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work with... Uh, I kind of work for myself. I work with uh, Michael Haji and 77 Ventures. For some reason, I was thinking it was like Mr. Mr. G, Mr. Big, or something big, or you. Oh, you go no, by everybody called me Big Fella. That's it. That's there we go. It okay, yeah, there that's who I work for, for real. Come on. Okay, I'm Come sorry. On. I'm sorry. I messed that one up. That's okay. We'll, we'll work on our timing for next oh, time. Oh, yeah. No, I got you. I yeah, definitely yeah, work for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and I believe the, the other, the, somebody else that you work with is staying on NECAT. Is that correct? Yes. So you will still be able to, somebody will still be able to guilt you into helping NECAT. I know Shauna Lynn will. I'm definitely going to help NECAT without a doubt. I love NECAT, yeah. you know, so. Good, yeah. good. Making sure we weren't losing your talent, just, you know. Oh, no, not at all. And, and I'm going to find another, I've been tasked with helping find a couple more board members for NECAT. Yes. So I'm still on a hunt for that, find the right people, to help it grow. Good. I, I appreciate hearing that. In our first uh, four years, there was a lot of board hopping on to NECAT. And I'm a board all, hopper? You're not a board hopper. Okay. I'm not calling, I'm not accusing <laughs> you of that. But, but definitely um, in our first term, there it was you got on NECAT, and about six months later, you're on some other board. So just well, making sure I've been that there since still... before the pandemic, you know, so I've yeah. been there a while. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, do we have any questions for, for this nominee? 
All right. Um, I'm going to enthusiastically make a motion for approval. I got a second. All those in favor? Oh, it was, did anybody else have questions? Okay. Uh, <laughs> against any abstentions. Thank you for your service. Thank you. All right, Ms. Trahern, is that correct? You got it. Okay, great. Um, so both of these terms are June uh, to June 20th, 2025. Tell us why uh, you are qualified to serve on this board. I've spent 30 plus years of my career in the television business, 25 years of it here in Nashville in the country music business. So I have experience in both uh, two areas that this new commission will take on. I think one of the things I'm most enthusiastic about is actually being on this commission as it's first being formed. Um, I run an organization that has 75 board members um, and have a lot of experience in governance and working towards compromise. And I think in this first year or two, as we're really setting up the commission for success and representing our creative community here in Nashville, I think this is a particularly good time for me to be, be a part of this and be a part of helping, uh, helping develop how, this, how it evolves. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, questions from the committee? All right. All those in favor? I'm sorry. I make a motion to approve. I have a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you for your thank service. You. Um, what we're going to do with Mr. Levitin is we have, do not have confirmation for the next meeting, so he's just going to be rolled to the heel. Um, all right, Mr. Dave Pomeroy, come on down. So after Mr. Pomeroy, we're gonna go, I'm saying that correctly, right? I believe so, yes. Okay, next, we're after him, we're gonna have Peter Curlin, Michael Montgomery, and then Annie, I'm sorry, your last name is A-Q-U-I-N-O. Aquino, thank you. Come on down. Y'all just take a line up and we'll we'll get you um, get rolling through here. All right, Mr. Pomeroy, your term would also be expiring on June 20th, 2026. Um, and you have been selected by your members of the American Federation of Musicians. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> tell us why you are willing to serve on this board. Well, I'm a 45 year Nashville resident and have worked in pretty much every aspect of the music industry. Uh, 15 years ago, I was elected president of uh, the Nashville Musicians Association. We are the third largest uh, musicians union in the country and moved about $12 million uh, through the uh, office getting musicians paid last year. Uh, I have a lot of experience with negotiations um, with various aspects of the industry, including the motion picture industry. And we've been able to get a very high level of cooperative relationships with employers who don't particularly have a history of working with the union because we take a very friendly, uh, mutually respectful approach, which is how Nashville became Music City over the last 100 years because of the fact that the original concept of the Athens of the South was strong enough to where when the music industry came to Nashville, those people who represented the music, the, the music makers were able to create a situation where it became a magnet for the world to come here and create because creators are respected, treated as professionals, and we work together. The music industry and the entertainment industry does not have to be a win-lose equation. It can be a win-win when we work together, and that's what we do. Thank you. Council members, questions? All right. Um, I move to approve. I have a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you, Mr. Pomeroy. Thank you. We've got Peter Curlin next. Do we have a Peter Curlin? All right, I'm gonna roll that to the heel. Um, Michael Montgomery. Welcome. So Welcome. your term would be expiring on June 20th, 2026. Again, you were selected by the Screen Actors Guild. So tell us why you are willing to serve on this committee. Yeah, and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. We are a merged union now. Uh, 
because as 45 years as a professional performer and the last 38 of them here in Nashville where I've worked in film, television, and theater, uh, I think I bring a unique perspective from the performer point of view. And in the last 25 years of union service that I have uh, given here, 19 of them, uh, as e either the president of the Screen Actors Guild branch or the merged unions, what we have now sag after is last nine years as their president, I also am very steeped in uh, how bureaucracy works. I have written many different programs for the National Screen Actors Guild. I have also served on the uh, national board of Screen Actors Guild and participated in many votes and I have negotiated many contracts and I think I bring something that's unique because our union, our SAG after a union, we are split right down the middle. We have about 1,600 members. About half of them are on the acting side. The other half are singers and recording artists. So I bring the perspective of both of those segments of people that are here in Nashville. And I echo Mr. Pomeroy about how we work with people. We always approach them with respect because you get more flies with sugar than you do with vinegar. I like it. Um, any questions from committee members? All right, quite frankly, I mean, both the way that y'all talk about your unions um, uh, and having union membership is important to me and I appreciate that y'all have, um, that you're at the table. So thank you so much and I move to approve. I got a second, all those in favor? Any against, any abstentions? All right, thank you so much thank for your you. service. Do we come back? Uh, Tuesday? If you would like to, you could, you know, happy if you need more screen time on mm. Channel 3, you're welcome. <laughs> other, other, other I, do, I don't chase that like I used to. So. Understandable. Otherwise, you're good to go. Thank okay, you so much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So. We are now moving to the uh, nominees submitted by the entertainment industry at large. And so first we have up Annie, I'm sorry, Annie, you're gonna have to say it one more time for me. Aquino. Aquino, and you were nominated by Josh Aquino. And so um, those of y'all who are coming up, uh, we, we do have the questionnaires that you submitted and colleagues, if y'all need a copy, we've got a copy up here if you need to read through those. And so feel free to just jump into why you want to serve on the board um, some of your biographical, we've got your biographical information, so feel free to just go into that. So, Ms. Aquino, tell us um, what makes you qualified for this new board um, that has been created. Um, first of all, I'm so excited that this commission has been created. It's been a long time coming, I feel like, and I... Um, I've been in Nashville for 13 years, so just long enough to consider myself kind of native. <laughs> and I'm so passionate about bringing new projects, all the projects that we can to Nashville because Nashville is so diverse that it can really check off almost every box when it comes to scenery, setting, things like that. And I feel like we have so much to offer. Um, that's not quite represented in, in the best way that it should be. And I think we can really hone in on that. Um, I've been a producer for over 10 years, so I'm no stranger to hard work. I am a member of the Producers Guild of America. I have good working relationships with um, IATSE, SAG-AFTRA, um, other groups here, and um, I just feel like I could bring a fresh perspective to how to get new projects here in Tennessee and I um, are in Nashville, should I say. Great, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, council members, questions? Tanya? No question, just a statement. I mean, this is certainly an impressive list of things you've produced and directed. Thank you for being willing to serve. Thank you, <laughs> that means a lot. And I also have something, we have something to pitch after this. So if everybody wants to stay, you get bonus. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, anything else from the council members? Okay, with that, uh, uh, Councilman Rosenberg. 
Hi, thank you for agreeing to serve. Um, my question, I guess it would be for everybody as they come up is what kind of um, special you know, skills or background you have in working in this kind of setting with a commission to try to achieve the kind of things that the commission's gonna be uh, tasked with achieving? Um, I have never served on a commission here, um, but you gotta start somewhere, right? <laughs> so um, Not on a commission necessarily, yeah, but just, Well, yeah. you know, um, I, as a producer, I work with groups of people to try to achieve the, a big goal, whatever that may be for whatever show that we're doing. Um, and I feel like it's a, it's a similar situation and it's not always the same group of people as a producer. Each show is different. Um, so it will be really exciting to be with like-minded people trying to accomplish the same goal. And just to be clear, when I said not necessarily on a commission, I wasn't saying that's not where you should start. I was saying <laughs> your experience doesn't Woo! have to be on a commission. Um, that came off I not the way I intended. I appreciate the clarity. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Rosenberg won't be asking any more questions today. <laughs> There's a good energy in here, I will you, say. You failed your, your audition, Councilman. <laughs> you gotta remember your lines. All right, anything else from the committee? Okay, with that, um, we're gonna move for approval, but keep in mind that means that you will then go before the, um, the council for a final vote. On Tuesday? Um, on Tuesday. Okay. So, all right, um, so I've got a motion, I have a second. All those in favor? Any against, any abstentions? So I guess to explain that a little bit further, what we're doing here is we're proving that you have the credentials and things like that to kind of move to that next level, so. Great, thank you thank very you. much for your time. All right, Jay Des De, um, Descoup De Des Descoupta, not here, rolled to the heel. Um, Lynn Glazer. Jeff Gordon, come on down. And then after that, we'll have Tony Harold. There, Tony Harold, no. Um, Mary Harrington. Shannon Hoochkins. I'm not seeing anybody move. Uh, these people are, y'all are, none of you identifies the names I'm calling. Okay. Um, Brian, whose last name starts with an L. Okay. Um, Sydney Lunn. Y'all are not gonna have as much competition as you thought. Uh, Trey McLaren. All right, we got a winner. Well, wait, we have someone moving. Thank you. I was, I was thinking maybe y'all were just out there. Okay, so. I'll just stop there for now. All right, so Mr. Gordon, you are not a NASCAR driver? I'm sorry? Do you, do you drive for NASCAR? No, ma'am, I okay. do not. <laughs> tell us, to, if, if, if you're not that one, please tell us what makes you qualified. Um, I'm a 40-year professional in uh, film and music and television. Uh, I've spent 30 years of that here in Nashville. Um, active in the Nashville Film and Video Association, uh, the Association of Future Film and Television, uh, Tennessee Film and Television Coalition, and Film Nashville. Uh, I've served on the board of that. I was also the Middle, Middle Tennessee business rep for IOTC 492 at one time. Uh, very vocal and, and passionate about the community. Looking forward to being a portion of this commission as it, as it comes from the ground up to make sure that we have something that's sustainable and uh, helps to nurture and grow our community and moving forward. Wonderful. Um, any questions? Council Lady Evans. I wanna take this opportunity to express some ignorance. I don't know what a gaffer is. A Could gaffer. you explain what that is? The gaffer originally was the gentleman that walked around in old England and, and lit the lamp poles and turned them off. And uh, in this modern time, McGaffer is the gentleman who executes the lighting plans of the director of photography. Thank you for explaining that. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're going to probably have a lot of those. We, we probably should have had somebody submit a, um, uh, a glossary. Council Lady Styles. Heard that sigh, Chair. 
Um, I just I just want to say that I, I I know Mr. Gordon, and he's been a part of the research and creating this commission over the last couple of years, and he is a really good candidate. So just wanted to share that. Do you have any rebuttal to her? <laughs> your nomination. No. You're welcome to deny. Um, all right, any other things from council members? Okay, well, so you're probably aware that this commission has stated goals in the legislation um, and you're, you're familiar with them? Yes. Okay, all right, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any against, any abstentions? All right, thank you, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trey McLaren. In the ballpark. How do you say it? McLarnan. McLarnan. Okay, great. Um, why would you like to serve on this board? What makes you qualified? Uh, I'm a filmmaker here in Nashville. Um, I make independent films produced, written, funded in Nashville. Uh, I'm a Nashville area native. Um, I make films through my production company that I have with my brother here in town, Best Part Productions. Some of you have seen me speak through the process of the formation uh, of this commission. Um, I'm here because I was asked to be here and I'm here to serve if that's what's uh, requested of me. And in answer to the question that you asked earlier, uh, I have over a decade of experience as a litigation attorney before I retired to make films. Because we're all, we're all like, yeah, good job. <laughs> if you can make it through litigation, then surely you can serve on a Metro Board and Commission, right? <laughs> this is one of the few times that I've been in this building, not for the purposes of a trial. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so does that mean that you, uh, that, that, that I think that speaks well because this, this, um, this commission will be recruiting and hiring a, a director level position. And so um, do you have any experience in, in that regard? Um, not specifically serving in that type of capacity. Um, I, I know at one point I was nearly the director of Ten Care for the state of Tennessee, but I declined the position. So wise decision. <laughs> um, but so no, I was offered a position like that, but I have not served in that capacity. But hopefully, uh, and I, I do presently serve as a artist advisor to the Arts and Business Council of Nashville. Sounds like you can probably negotiate us a good deal. <laughs> um, all right, questions. Move for approval. I got a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? You are approved by our committee as qualified. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna run down the names. Gina Miller. Clerk, did these, like we communicated, did they, like, and they confirm they'd be coming? Not everybody? Oh, okay. Well. Um, Travis Nicholson. Council Lady Styles, for what purpose? Man, oh man, Chair. Yes. Oh, wait, uh, some people did not mm -hmm. did not receive notifications. So uh, Mr. Curlin is actually on his way down here right now and did not know he was supposed to be here today. So okay. I don't know how many of that, how many people on this list that applies to, but just an FYI. Okay. Uh, Travis Nicholson, do we have a Travis Nicholson? Get a Rosenberg. Rosenberg. I, I guess. How was notice provided for this? Was it the normal process through the clerk's office? Okay. Thank you. And it was with their email that they submitted. Okay. Okay. So we don't have a Travis Nicholson. Rolled to the end. Trevor O'Neill. Rolled to the end. Sarah Otterstorm. Rolled. Stephanie Reeves. Our decisions are getting easier and easier, y'all. Um, Seth Holloway, Soloway, Soloway. Uh, Tamara Trexel. Come on down. Let's see if we can get some people to join you in line, though. Um, William Tyler. Okay, you are the last of our at-large, so we'll, inter we'll interview you and then we'll move to the next section. 
<laughs> I rolled her. She's in flight. Yeah. Um, Tamara. Madam yes. Speaker, thank you for I like inviting me I, to be here. Oh wait, I got ask, I got elevated. <laughs> she counsel Styles face right now. That's great. Totally <laughs> worth it. You've got my vote. Um, tell us what makes you qualified for for this uh, commission. You know, I found out 25 years ago that I was born to do this business. I, I really found my niche a little bit later in life than I, I thought. I was in political world in the beginning. I worked for Al Gore and the wonderful Ned McWhorter. And that's the first time I heard about film when I was working for Ned. You know, we, we won, obviously. And then I worked for him and uh, he let us choose where we wanted to work. And I worked for economic and community development. And, and they wanted me to edit everything that they did in the film office. I said, what is it, the film office? What do they do? So that's when I first it first captured my interest, and then the Governor McWhorter put me in charge of a special project, the Superconducting Super Collider Project, and he said, honey, you need to make a film. I said, yes, sir. Never made a film in my entire life, but it won first place in the world in a scientific competition. So it was then that I knew that I had that ability and that one day I would, I would explore that. So, moving on with my life, I'm back in the film business as an actress, and I work with some of these fine people behind me in Screen Actors Guild. I'm on the board, Screen Actors Guild. On the, I'm an elected delegate for three states. But most importantly, I believe in service. I believe that, you know, God has blessed me very much, and I, I want to give back. And so I've made about 14 movies, and the one I am the most proud of, and please write this down because I want you to watch it, A Country Christmas Story on Lifetime. A Country Christmas Story on Lifetime. It's also on Apple Plus and Amazon. And we were the first in Little Nashville, Tennessee, we were the first to cast an interracial family in a Christmas movie. We were the first. So we led, we led the way. And that was in 2013. And if you notice, in 2014, the network started using our idea. And it was wonderful. It just felt so good because I thought, well, I've reached that goal. You know, I want to everybody to be included because my family is totally mixed race, Asian, African-American, Caucasian. You know, I want, that's the world, you know? And so we, we were able to succeed in that. And then as far as service goes, uh, with my screenplays, I always make it Tennessee with my personal screenplays that I work on with the writers. The story is always set in Tennessee. I try to get it made here, and in years past, it's, that's been difficult. So, myself, Dame Promroy, Mike Montgomery, and just about maybe three other people over the years have worked very, very hard to get the state incentives exactly like we need them. And we finally did it. Oh! We finally did it. Oh, I'm so happy. And then you guys did this, which was amazing. So we are ready. I mean, we're so ready to break out in Tennessee. And it's very important that we did this right when you were doing your thing because it's all going to come together and we're going to have we're going to have more films that we can accommodate, which is great. You know, we want that. So we uh, the reason we did it is we just bugged him to death. You know, with like a better word, the governor. We just it's, you know, finally, it's his decision. So we just stayed on him. We didn't give up. I'm not a person who gives up. It took me 10 years to get a country Christmas story on the air. Dolly Parton stayed with me for five and a half years. And then Brian McKnight came on and a couple other people helped me. You know, just, I don't give up. I love to serve. I love students. I love educating. I did my Sweet Mountain Christmas premiere with Watkins students. I did it live from Lifetime at Watkins, and that was right before COVID. I don't give up. And um, when Mayor Purcell was running for office, he asked me to write all of his debate notes. So I did. It was a pleasure for me to do so. Not a pleasure for my then husband, because I didn't.
do it on vacation, but <laughs> it was fun. So then he asked me to be his director of film, and it was my pleasure to serve. And when I was in that job at the time, it's not the way it's structured now. And I want to applaud you, each and every one of you, for structuring the job like it is now. Joy has told me about the structure. Jeff, it's exactly the way it should be. Because I was prohibited from doing certain things, being a member of the mayor's office in 1999 to 2001. However, we still won first place in marketing in the entire world. Little Nashville, Tennessee, first place in marketing in the entire world with our film directory for Nashville. I didn't do this alone. There's, in fact, I think Jeff, weren't you in on those meetings? I think Jeff was in on some of the meetings. We had volunteers come in and help us. And I wanted a big board because I had to get a lot of stuff done like that. So I had a 31 member board. And then uh, one of the really great crew people in town happened to be a member of the Gambino family. Now, he was not in the mob. He, you know, <laughs> stepped away. But the mayor thought it would be good <laughs> if I named him. So he always, you know, you kind of have to have a little protective angel. And I, I got to, you know, he was just great. And everybody on that board was great. And they did the grunt work. They did the fancy work. They did everything because you can't do it alone. So this board has to be willing to get out and speak at civic associations, at club meetings, speak directly to the mayor if something's going wrong and say, look, you know, we need this and that and that, and speak directly to your council and be honest. This person has to be honest. This board has to be honest or you won't get done. So uh, we had things that were just set up with the State Film Commission. You work hand in glove with State Film Commission and there should never be any animosity or rivalry because believe me, they need all the help they can get. They're a two-person commission, a two-person worker bees. Now, I asked my board to work. For instance, one of the members of my board, if you remember the Hager twins, John Hager, he would wear the shortest shorts I've ever seen in my life, and he'd walk in the mayor's office, and the mayor, hey, John, and he'd sit down, he'd answer my phones, you know, because sometimes I didn't have an assistant at the time, which was a big era, by the way. You got to provide an assistant. So he would just answer the phone once a week. He'd come, that was a blessing, you know. And of course, he could wear the shorts because he was John Hager. But that's just a good example. Somebody didn't mind doing work, real work. You know, we also had a summit, you know, a summit of people who were there in town making movies. And we had several movies at that time. The state film commissioner and I would always go to Locations Expo. Again, very important. I don't know why, but the state has not gone to that in a long time. So I would challenge the council to advise the board to go to the Locations Expo, the film commissioner's Locations Expo. That's where I competed and won first place in the world and all that stuff. It's very good for you because you do compete on certain things and you learn. And the producers and directors from the networks and the studios, they come and meet you. And that's how we got one of our best movies we ever had at that time, A Death in the Family, which was filmed in Franklin and Nashville. Now, having said that, and I've talked to a couple of people here about that, you do work in Williamson County, so you might want to ask Ms. them Trexler. to pay. Oh, am I going over? We, Although we've rolled a lot of people, um, I think we need to wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm serving. We, we might have some questions. Tanya, do you have a question? Hold on. Wait, wait. You mentioned Franklin, and that's one thing that as soon as you mentioned a Christmas, a country the, Christmas story, yeah. um, I looked it up, I saved it. And Thank you. That I always think about when these country Christmas uh, movies are filmed. They're always filmed in Franklin. They're, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is, but we have some beautiful places in yes, Davidson County, so we I would just to. like to put that bug in your ear yeah, and start no, thinking right. about Nashville. Yeah. Thank you. That was actually filmed in, in Upper East Tennessee and Dollywood, country Christmas story. And a, unfortunately, a portion of it was in Los Angeles. I thought 
months to get it all here. I fought to the point of whether the lawyer said, do you want a movie or do you not want a movie? I mean, it came to that point. So I said, I want a movie. And Dolly said, stay firm on Dollywood and I'll give you everything. And she did. You know, she's a very big advocate for us. And she actually did a commercial um, one year for the state of Tennessee. So we can always depend on her. Thank you. I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? You are qualified to move on to the next step in the process. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, all right, so next are the nominees submitted by council members for terms expiring on June 20th, 2024. Um, we're gonna start with Brian Sexton. Is he here? Great. And then next up will be Chris Cobb. Come on down. And then Shannon Sanders. Is she here? He. Is he here? Yes. Okay. Um, and then Sally Williams. All right. Um, Chris Cobb first. Chris Cobb. Brian? No, Brian Sexton. Okay. Sorry, keeping you all on your feet. Oh, all right. Council Lady Styles, for what purpose? Uh, thank you, Chair. Stephanie Silverman is also nominated. You didn't call her up unless I'm crazy. I'm just doing a few at a time. Okay. Would you like to be rules chair? All right, um, Sexton, yes, great, thank you. Um, tell us uh, why you are qualified for this committee. Yes, yeah, so, because I care deeply about our creative economy um, and I have uh, copies of my resume here. We've and, got it. Okay. Um, when I was asked to pursue the commission, uh, you know, I'm not one of those individuals where I just kind of hop, just just to do something. I actually read the legislation and read the goals, and two of the goals that stood out to me was the quality of life, the work around education, the promotion of small business. Um, those goals are areas where I've been working for the past 15 years in regards to the creative the uh, class that we have here. And it is my hope that uh, while we have all these wonderful resources, we can help our creative members uh, sustain and stay here in Nashville. And so as part of my duty as a commissioner, you get someone that walks through day one with relationships to Metro agencies, to other nonprofit and for-profit agencies that really speak to assisting those creatives that need uh, additional assistance as we work to address our quality of life issues. Uh, that's one of the reasons. Uh, other reasons as far as my willingness to serve is because I feel like I am the most qualified individual. It, um, I don't work in the film and TV industry, but I do know members of the film and TV industry need housing. I do know members of the film and TV industry need infrastructure. Uh, and so my willingness to serve purely comes from uh, a space of making sure that our creative economy has a firm foundation, firm setting, is healthy. And uh, that is my value that I plan to bring to this commission if accepted. Um, all right, Council Lady Hancock. Well, I was disappointed when you did not run for council in District 11, but I'm super excited that you're running for this. Thank you for being willing to serve. Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, trying to find someone else. There we go, Council Lady Evans. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, we've heard from a couple of folks who are um, had some interesting career paths and now have landed into like the creative side is kind of their full time endeavor, and you are kind of the opposite, where the creative side is everything you do outside of your day job. And so, what what do you feel? Um, like would, in, in making that comparison, I guess I'm kind of curious, like did you ever think about making it your full-time endeavor? And was there a reason that you also have not gone down the path of transitioning to that being something you pursued? Well, a career? Uh, yes, I, thank you for that question. Uh, I consider myself a singer, but my kids, they know I can't sing. 
so my my superpowers have always lied on the on the community development side of our artists community, uh, making sure that our artists are aware of workforce development opportunities, housing, basic needs and resources to keep them here. Uh, the Arts and Business Council recently did a study, and the survey re uh, results showed that in the next two years, our artists community they're thinking about relocating due to the cost of living. Uh, we're losing about 40 people a day. And so when I think about how um, Nashville's economy, a leg on that stool is our creative industry. There has to be someone on this commission that is thinking about the quality of life aspect and can come in day one with resources, relationships that can help that part of the conversation of this commission. I wouldn't, that, I wouldn't believe that to be true if it wasn't written into the ordinance. That is, that is what attracted me to the position. Um, I know the ordinance had several, a couple changes, but uh, that, those two things along with the education and the workforce quality of life, th that's why I wanna serve. So the common thread between members of the uh, creative community and what I do, and making sure that they have the proper resources to thrive and sustain and make the best out of the resources that my colleagues have shared in, in regards to music, uh, film, and entertainment. I want to keep people here. I think we've been seeing that on an ad lately. Um, <laughs> uh, any other questions? All right, with that, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any against, any abstentions? Thank you, you are approved for the next step of this adventure. Mr. Cobb, you're up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tell us why you are qualified to, um, and why you're willing to serve on this commission. Certainly. Um, I started booking concerts here in Nashville in 1999 at small venues like Windows on the Cumberland and 12th and Porter and Douglas Corner and The Sutler and, and on and on. I started working at Exit Inn in 2004 and owned it until December. Um, I was part of Dance in the District in 2003 and four and CMA Fest um, 7 to 10. I found the dates. Thank you, Sally Williams. Um, booked Nashville Earth Day Fest from 2008 to 18, Live on the Green for its 14 years since its inception in 09 and co-founded Marathon Music Works. Um, so I have a lot of small local business concert experience, but um, it's really since March 2020, I think that uniquely qualifies me to serve in this way. Um, two other local independent venue owners and I founded a local nonprofit trade org then called Music Venue Alliance Nashville. We worked with Metro Council's Financial Oversight Committee to develop um, a $2 million local grant program um, for small stages uh, in Nashville. We worked with the NCVC to develop and implement a streaming program that provided gigs for 120 local musicians and artists during COVID. We are currently helping with the independent venue study here that Metro um, is partaking. And um, just today worked with NDOT to extend to our parking limits around independent venues. Uh, at that time, I also was one of five founders of the National Independent Venue Association, where I currently serve as the Tennessee chapter president. Um, and I think this is really what makes me most qualified to, to serve in this way. Um, that, that organization started with five members, as mentioned. We have over 3,000 today. Um, and I'm in weekly contact uh, with these independent concert promoters, independent venue owners, independent comedy clubs, all over the country and in a lot of cities that are experiencing similar issues or have experienced similar issues as Nashville. Um, and, and I'd like to bring a lot of these best practices, policies, and strategies uh, that I've learned about um, here. Um, I attended many of the meetings leading to this point in the creation of this commission uh, and hope to serve, I think, specifically as far as the goals of the commission are concerned in support of um, independent businesses, which, which were mentioned in the uh, legislation. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, questions, council members? Council Lady Evans. Um, thank you for your effort with the NDOT issue um, and parking. And I think that kind of Reminds me, of, of course, the time that you were working on the, the COVID committee and distributions of funds and things like that. Kind of, um, what are things that you think 
maybe more specifically that came out of that time when you were engaged in that process that um, you feel like are not necessarily like red flags, but things that you go, this is a deficiency. With this commission, we can meet this deficiency. Like, are there things that you think would align from what you learned in that COVID process um, as potentially part of this commission that you'd want to explore? Like you mentioned the parking situation, which yeah. I go, that's immediately like something that's not necessarily commission related, but it's a very specific, tangible thing that has a benefit to venues and musicians and things. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, so so new issues come up all the all the time. To your point about the parking, like, you know, that comes out of nowhere, and, and that's why Music Venue Alliance Nashville exists is to address that for its members. But um, but so a, a big part of the issue um, for these small independent venues is obviously real estate values. Um, you know, uh, uh, our own successes uh, creating these issues that, that we didn't expect here. And, and um, so, yeah, specifically, um, I, I would like to work on and, and see a lot of progress made around um, finding creative ways for the public and the private sector to come together to ensure that creative spaces here locally are able to stay and aren't losing their leases. Uh, that's being achieved uh, in sister cities like Austin and Portland and Seattle currently. There's working models for it, uh, but we're not quite there in Nashville. Thanks for the question. All right, any other questions? All right, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? And for those of y'all who we're approving now, because since you'll be selected from a group, it is probably best to come back on Tuesday. Sorry. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Shannon Sanders, come on up. Hello, hello. Mr. Sanders, please tell hey, how, how and why you are willing to serve on this commission. How and why? <laughs> Anybody that knows me would tell you that I lived at the intersection of creativity and community. Um, as far as the music goes, as a songwriter, producer, I've got three Grammys. As far as television goes, I've got two Emmys. Um, I've had music and films all the way from the recent Elvis movie to Shark Tales. Um, I've toured with a major touring artist for over 20 years as a musical director. I get it. When we, when, when we talk music and we talk film and we talk entertainment, I get it. But when we talk Nashville, I get it. Um, I went to Hillsborough High School. I went to Tennessee State University. And so my heart is in Nashville and my heart is in this creative community as well. And so that's why, um, that's why, that's why I want to serve on this commission. I feel like I bring a lot to this commission. I feel like I bring a lot of real time experience to this commission, um, and a lot of, uh, a lot of experience, um, and a lot of enthusiasm for it. Thank you. Do we have questions from the council? Council Lady Styles. Mr. Sanders, thank you, chair. Uh, can you share uh, some of your some of your other experiences in the business? What you've done? How you got in? How did you get your Grammy? Oh wow! Okay, um, so I've got three. First one was with an artist named India Ari. The second one was R and B. The second one was in rock with Johnny Lang. The third one was most recently with the Fist Jubilee Singers. We made history, becoming the first HBC right here in Nashville to win a Grammy. So quite proud of that. Um, you know, my, my entire career happened here. You know, it, it was important for me over the years to bring artists to Nashville and to record here so that they could experience everything that this creative ecosystem had to offer. Um, and we could go on and on. You know, the most recent thing, you know, um, I talked about the Elvis movie. That one, that one is so important because what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of the music for that film was done right here. I wound up acting in a movie, and they pulled a couple other folks out to act in the movie as well. And so that made me a member of SAG. So now I'm a member of Recording Academy. I'm a member of SAG. I serve on several boards. You know, those including Recording Academy. I just rolled off, but CMA, ACM. Um, you know, so heavily invested in our community, heavily invested in service to our creative community. All right, thank you so much. Yes. Council Lady Evans. Thank you, Chair. I was just looking at your questionnaire and it you've got the box checked that you've served on a border commission before, but yes. I'm not, which one was that? Tourism. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay, great. Um, 
Anything else? All right, we've got a motion, we've got a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you, Mr. Sanders. We'll Thank see you, you Tuesday night. And then we're gonna, um, so Ms. Williams, and then after Ms. Williams, we're gonna go back to um, Peter Curlin. And then we have, is Stephanie Silverman is here? Yes. Come on down. Um, Salita Holloway is here. John Huey. He's not here. Okay, thank you. I know that. Yeah, I guess if y'all know each other, you could check this <laughs> out. Um, <laughs> Carrie Nelson Birch. Is here? here. Okay, great. <laughs> um, and Nick Burren. Okay, great. Okay, so, um, Ms. Williams. Hello. Tell us, uh, tell us why you're wanting to serve on this commission. I moved to Nashville in 1994 specifically to be part of the music community here in Nashville. When I was in college, I promoted concerts um, at the University of Missouri Columbia and when it ta came time for me to decide where I wanted to live, I didn't want to live on either coast. And so it was Minneapolis, Nashville or Austin. And I moved to Minneapolis and I love the city, but I didn't love the job. So I moved here and it, um, it was the best thing that I could ever have done to become part of this music community. Um, and it has fed my soul. It has brought me my family. My husband um, works in the music community. And so since 1994, I did move away for a couple of years, but even during that time, I was working with Nashville Music Business. For thir 30 years almost, um, I have focused my life's work on this town. I spent about 20 years with Ryman Hospitality Properties, over a decade managing the Ryman Auditorium, and then I moved on to be the first woman manager, female manager of the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, about six months before the pandemic, I left to lead the Nashville Business for Live Nation as the president of music and business strategy, which if you boil it down, what that means is I wake up in the morning and I decide what I'm gonna do to help that company be the type of partner for Nashville that I want for Nashville. And over the years, in addition to the work that I've done um, from a pay the bills perspective, um, I have committed time to industry organizations. I chaired uh, the Country Music Association. Sarah and I have worked very, very closely together. Uh, I chaired the Leadership Music Organization. I chaired the Opry Trust Funds. I have worked for civic organiz with civic organizations. I'm currently on the board of the Chamber of Commerce and Music City Incorporated, which is the 501c3 for or the CVC, where I do my best to represent the music community within the greater business community. So it, I'm, I spent many years on the now defunct Music City Music Council. And I was really proud of the lot of, a lot of the work that we did. Um, one of the things I, I feel very, very strongly and echo what has been said previously, we are at this inflection point where what is really at the core of Nashville is, is threatened and we have we have creatives, but we also have all of the business community that works around the creatives. We're, we have this, we're fortunate. We have all of these creators, but we have engineers, and we have lighting people, and we have stage hands, and we have bus drivers, and we have band members, and we have, and, and we're, we're coming to a point where people are thinking maybe this isn't the place for me. And so I'm thrilled, you know, we, again, we did some things with Music City Music Council that were great. Ryman Lofts is still, if I'm not mistaken, the only creative 
affordable housing in Nashville. And that, that we just, we, that's, we're music city. So um, we also did a lot on the council to bring business to Nashville, um, both permanent business, uh, like the back office of Warner, and what we called sort of temporary business, like the Polestar Awards, um, and a variety of other tourism related. So I'm just, I'm hoping that with this council, uh, commission, we are able to continue the good work that we all knew was important um, in a in a really structured and long term way. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to hopefully be in on the front end of that, so that we can come up with some achievable goals, create some realistic strategy, and then start executing, so that we can preserve what, to me, is the most important part of Nashville. Thank you. Um, do we have questions from the council? All right, seeing none, I've got a motion to approve. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, thank you. We will thank see you. Thank you for this opportunity. Enjoy, thank you. <laughs> um, so now we're going back to uh, Mr. Peter Curlin, term expiring on June 20th, 2026. You have been nominated by the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees um, for this is a slotted in position. You also received other nominations for the industry at large category, but we're just gonna slot you in um, since you are the only one for that, uh, for that slot. So having said that, um, why do you think that your members chose you for this position? Uh, I am the business agent for the, I think, the largest IATC local uh, in Nashville, but I also was selected by the uh, other locals that serve this area. Um, I have been the business agent for, uh, I don't know, 20 years, and before that I was president uh, and was one of the charter members of the local here. So I suspect that's why I was chosen. Uh, I started my film career here in Nashville 40 years ago. Uh, I continue to live in Nashville. I've lived in the city since 1964. Um, and uh, it, is, it is a big part of my job to try to support motion picture and television uh, production in the area, uh, as well as recruit shows to come in from out of town and to help them p choose Nashville as a shooting location. So um, I've been doing that for quite a long time, and uh, I, I saw a need for um, a commission in a film office like this, and I'm very, very happy to be part of it and to help um, help guide it towards uh, being successful. Uh, I also have, uh, as this is the combined commission, I, I coincidentally have ties into the music industry as well, uh, and uh, not as many as Mr. Sanders, but I do have two Grammys, so I hope, hopefully that helps. Great, thank you. Um, questions from the committee? Okay, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so next we will go on to, we've got Ms. Silverman. Come on up. She was nominated by Council Lady Welch. And um, tell us why you are interested in serving and what talents you bring to the committee. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have no Grammys, unfortunately, but you know, life goals. Um, my name is Stephanie Silverman. I am the executive director of the Belcourt Theater. I have been for 17 years now. Um, and so clearly we work very deeply in the film um, industry. We work with the major studios, the independent community, uh, the whole panoply of distribution partners. So we have this sort of national connection. Um, but we also have built the institution based on community, based on Nashville, based on engagement with our neighbors, with um, with nonprofits across the city, with other sort of uh, creative and uh, collaborators. So uh, I think what I really bring is is a is a desire and and a proven track record of working at the sort of intersection of the national conversation around cre the creative community and the local community and the sort of the grassroots.
its ground up effort to make things successful and rooted here. And I think you see that in the bell court and our growth over time. I will also say, um, and, and many of you have maybe seen me here talking about arts funding. I've been the chair of the Nashville Arts Coalition. Um, I have been, I have been the president of boards. I am led by a board at the Bell Court. I have been on boards. I have hired people. So I, I think, um, in particular, at the at the startup of a of an entity like this commission, I bring a set of skills that really are relevant, and it's also a kind of work that I find to be very exciting and no more exciting than in Nashville and for this group of workers and uh, and the sort of ability to. Protect protect this workforce, as you heard from Sally, as you heard from Brian, um, people are leaving and it's real. And uh, just a little bit of personal, my husband is a working musician. One of the reasons we live in Nashville is he can work here, he can base here, he can fly all over the country easily. Our children can go to great public schools, we can buy a house, we can have a life as middle class humans with a, you know, a nonprofit executive lady and a, and an electric violinist. That is a very unique situation to Nashville. And what we need to do to preserve it is I think core to the work of this commission, but I think also core to the work of our visioning for Nashville going forward. Great, thank you. Um, do we have questions? Council Lady Stiles. Thank you very much, Chair. Actually, I just wanted to make a, a final statement before I depart and <laughs> say that Ms. Silverman, Ms. Williams, Mr. Sanders, uh, Mr. Curlin have all been a part of the conversations that led to the creation of this commission. And their experience, their knowledge has been invaluable and they would all be great to serve on um, starting this commission and really laying a foundation for our new Office of Music, Film and Entertainment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilor Stiles. Any other questions from the committee? All right, with that, I've got a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you so much. We will see you on Tuesday. Thank you. Um, Salida Hallway, come on up. Nominated by Council Lady Hurt. Um, tell us what skills you bring to the table for this new commission. I think you saw some of my information, and I think you may have received my uh, resume. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I want to go uh, from a different mindset in that I have worked in the music industry, have worked with the gospel music industry, and continue to work with Dr. Bobby Jones. But I want to also pivot a little bit here and talk about the fact that I work at Meharry Medical College. I am Senior Vice President for Board of Trustees Relations and Community Engagement. And I think those two things would help this committee or this commission to be bigger, better, and help them to do the job that needs to be done. Policies and procedures need to be put in place. Part of my position at Meharry has been to handle the policies and procedures and to read them and make sure that they qualify and quantify with what that what is going on and what needs to go on. I think I could do that. Uh, the governance, I work with the Board of Trustees and not only do I work with the Board of Trustees, I work with the AGB, which is the Association of Governing Boards, which governs boards and I would like to use the experiences that I have with that, working with that, and I'm now a member of the council that uh, looks over the people that work with boards across the nation. So I think I would do good at that. I'm also a former council member. Uh, as a former council member, I think that I would do a good job of representing you all and showing the community that that the council has always had its first opinion, its first thought, its first love for this city. You would not be serving if you didn't have a love. I have a love. I've only asked to be on one committee since I've been out. Now, I think I've been out 20 years this year. Uh, so, I uh, this is a committee 
Uh, when I first heard about it, I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, but then once I read the what the ordinance says, and it doesn't say a lot. It says a lot could happen. I want to be a part of what's happening. And I want you all to know that I know I can do this job and I can be a very helpful mate in making sure that this commission be what you want it to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions from the committee? All right, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any um, abstentions? Thank you, we'll see you Tuesday. You all made it too easy. <laughs> um, Carrie Nelson Birch. Nominated by Councilman Swope. And so let us know what skills you're bringing to the committee. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I've worn a number of hats in the entertainment industry. I've actually been in the entertainment industry for 30 years, uh, first in Los Angeles, and then having moved here 23 years ago to get married and start a family. And while my job takes me back and forth each month, Nashville is home. Uh, I've, I've worked in development for uh, Warner Brother Studios and Lorimar back in the day. I was an executive at NBC and went to William Morris in Los Angeles as a TV agent, went in as an agent. And my ex-husband, who was born and raised in Nashville, kept saying, one day, Nashville, we came for a visit, bought a house, and I'm like, we're doing this. So I was fortunate that the Nashville-based office allowed me to travel back and forth each month. And so I've worked in scripted television, unscripted, worked with our country artists at William Morris, uh, finding TV and film opportunities for them. And then I uh, have worked with several production companies here in town, developing and selling projects. I uh, started my own company, hung my own shingle. So my company is my own shingle. And I play matchmaker for people on projects. I did take a uh, position a year and a half ago with a global company. Uh, Everybody is based in my division out of LA, but I still reside here and I love it. And while I'm back and forth and developing projects, one of my strengths are really, as I said, playing matchmaker. I love introducing uh, individuals in the business or creative community in different sectors to one another, generating conversation, more opportunities. I've uh, developed projects, I've negotiated deals. I, like uh, the other gentleman said, like to find the win-wins, and I'm a huge advocate of Nashville. Um, I've served on several boards. I just transitioned from, on the, I should say, the film festival board to an advisory role. Been on the board for leadership music. Uh, at the time, we had a screenwriters conference and for Filmcom. And it's very passionate to serve, but also finding opportunities and how do we keep some of the, the, the history of the town, of the city, the heart of it, but also being open to new mindsets and bringing people together. Great, thank you. I see on your resume that um, you did Hulk Hogan's Celebrity Wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Um, my brother will now be committing my vote to you. <laughs> That's great. I, back uh, in the day, sold a number of TV shows to CMT. <laughs> so yes. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee? Okay, I've got a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, thank you. We'll see you on Tuesday. I do have to bring up that I'll be in LA for work next Tuesday, okay. all next week, okay. so. All right, thank you so thank much. You. Okay, um, so that takes us to Nick Buren. Is, am I saying your last name correctly? Buren. Buren, okay. All right, great. So what skills do you bring um, that are unique to the committee? So I work as a vice president of private wealth management at Alliance Bernstein at our global headquarters here in town. And I think I bring a really unique skill set in the fact that I understand investment, finance, budget. But I began my career in Los Angeles. I helped launch the Oprah Winfrey Network out there. Uh, I was at Sony TV when we developed Breaking Bad, uh, launched a number of shows for NBC, CBS, Hallmark Channel, nominated for three Emmys along the way. 
But we decided to move our family away from Los Angeles to Nashville for the community and the culture of this city. And so what I've been able to do is find ways to take my past life in entertainment, TV, as a creative and mirror that with my current life, working with investors, wealth management, and investment. And what I've come to realize in just getting to know the creative community here in town is there is such a robust community, creative community, as we've heard, filmmakers, editors, talent, but there's a lack of capital and there's a lack of investment. And more appropriately, when I see independent filmmakers, we're talking sub $10 million production budgets, looking to secure financing outside of the state of Tennessee and shoot their productions outside of the, outside of the state of Tennessee, I think that's problematic because they all recognize there's so much opportunity here, but there's a lack of education around what it means to become an investor in an independent film or what it means to bring a larger production to the city. We had a great opportunity with Nashville. My wife was actually just a publicist on the Nicole Kidman film, uh, Holland, Michigan, that just shot here. And so Nicole has a five picture deal with Amazon and she talked about, you know, along the way, how that film alone created 200 jobs, leveraged 375 different vendors here in the state of Tennessee. And so there's such an opportunity to do more and bring more investment here. And I think that's where I could lend a unique perspective of understanding the point of view of the investor, of the financier, and then of course, the creative community, which is always gonna be near and dear to my heart. Ah. So, that's me. And I also serve on three boards here in town. I serve on the Nashville Opera, Alive Hospice, and then Souls for Souls. So I understand what it's like to work on well-functioning boards. I understand what it's like to work on very challenged boards that have to deal with difficult decisions regarding the future of certain organizations. Uh, but more importantly, I love giving my time back to the community, and that's what entices me most about this. Mr. Barron, thank you so much for um, your answers. And the Nicole Kidman, I think several of my friends stalked that scene around my district trying to get a glimpse. Can you confirm your address to us? It's, yes, thank you. I'm a resident of Williamson County. Yeah. So I'm might sorry um, for you are disqualified for this commission because you do have to have lived, be a resident of Davidson County and have lived here for a year. And so, but thank you so much for your interest and, and you. continue the great work. And we appreciate um, all that you're involved in. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so next we have up, do we have a Gary West? And just maybe ask you guys who you are next. Um, William uh, Lowry, come on down. Um, Christopher, Cap can do it. <laughs> Capazzoli? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, Thomas, thank you. Come on. <laughs> Come closer to the mic. Um, Manuel is withdrawn. Jerry Pentecost is um, not available for either meeting. So I think that if they, they do have to appear before the committee. Is that correct? So, um, so they will be disqualified. Um, Kurt Hahn is withdrawn, actually. And then uh, Jason Padgett, um, we don't have any contact information, so assuming he is not here, correct? Okay. Okay, so that does take you to where William Lowry, correct? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Y'all have been troopers. You were nominated by Council Lady Berkeley Allen and also um, for an at-large um, industry position as well. So tell us tell us what inspired uh, Council Lady Allen to uh, endorse and support your nomination. Thank you. Uh, well, I can't tell you what inspired her to nominate me, but I can tell you what inspires me, uh, which is a passion for the arts and the community it supports. Um, by the way, I was gonna make a last but not least joke and lack of originality, but I'm not last, so. Uh, I discovered Nashville about 25 years ago when I came here for undergrad. Um, I'm a Vanderbilt graduate, um, but upon graduation, immediately went to LA 
and I spent the next 15 some odd years working in the entertainment business, specifically in film finance. Uh, the bulk of that was at Endeavor, which is the parent company of William Morris and IMG and a lot of uh, suite of assets in entertainment. Um, but as a southerner living in California, I always leaned into the cultural and regional efforts here. Um, found myself sort of into the crossover music space, specifically country. Uh, I ran our faith-based film division there. Uh, I am a former uh, football player at Vanderbilt, so I was inherently the sports guy as well and helped open up a lot of our uh, initiatives th uh, there. And uh, in doing so, just really, I wouldn't say rediscovered the South, but you know, I always had Nashville back in my purview. So I had the opportunity to move back here seven years ago. Um, and since then, my main objective has been providing connectivity, connectivity between Nashville and Hollywood, music and film, uh, providing advisory services across finance, content development, sales and distribution all a bunch of buzzwords and entertainment field. Um, current initiatives include um, launching a sports network here, an animation studio, a couple film funds, um, advising most of Dolly Parton's content across film and TV, currently building a fast channel for her at a linear network, uh, doing a lot of Web3 work for her, as well as some other country music artists. Web3 would require an entire council meeting to describe, and I'm not smart enough to do it. Um, just smart enough to activate. Uh, I currently um, teach a course as an adjunct professor at Belmont in film finance. I'm on the board for the National Film Festival. I'm former chair of the Tennessee Entertainment Commission. I'm an advisor at the National Entrepreneur Center. And I'm very happy to be here. I like to serve. I like community. One of, I think it was Mr. Saunders said he likes the says at the intersection of art and culture. I've said that many times, although I usually say art and commerce because I like to make money as well as promote art and culture. I know that's not the goal of this board, but I would be honored to serve and provide uh, as much value as possible. Well, clearly being a Vanderbilt uh, football player means that you're willing to work hard with uh, very little wins. And so I uh, Thank you appreciate for that. that. Anchor down, go doors. And no, Councilman Rosenberg, you are not going to be called on for any rebuttal. Um, any questions or comments from any other council members, though? Exactly. All right. So I move for approval. Um, <laughs> any, any other questions? Great, okay, we, I move for approval, I have a second. All those in favor? Any against? All right, um, I assume no some ex, ex, um, abstentions. Couldn't get that out, thank you so much. Thank we'll you. See you Tuesday. All right, so Christopher, Cap, now I'm gonna get it wrong. What did I say, Kappa, uh, Capazzoli. That's correct, yeah. It's because I because I've watched Rizzoli and Isles, so I can do that one. No, um, that's that's great. A lot of people get that one wrong. So well, thank, thank you. you. So yeah. you were also nominated by Council Lady Berkeley Allen. Yep. So um, what in your background and in your experience makes you qualified for this committee? Uh, everything. <laughs> I'm probably one of the younger people who's actually nominated. I'm 36. Uh, as a lot of people have said, when they moved to Nashville, I moved to Nashville in 2005. Uh, I went to Vanderbilt as well. Uh, I did my minor in music literature history. I'm a musician myself. I had a five-year residency on Broadway uh, between uh, the Old Red Bar as well as Dirk Bentley's Whiskey Row. Uh, I had a five-year residency playing bluegrass music at 12 South Tap Room and 51st North Tap Room. I have an almost master's in music. Uh, I emphasize that because I'm just one credit shy when I dropped out from NYU. Uh, but I am a musician. Uh, my day job, I work for Iron Mountain Entertainment Services. Uh, most people know Iron Mountain, the records management company. We have a media and entertainment division uh, that deals with climate controlled storage as well as digital transfers of uh, media. So we work with labels, individual artists, um, studios. So. That's, I didn't have prepared remarks, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's fine. You, guys, you guys have sat there a lot, so I won't say too much more than that. Oh, we appreciate that. Do we have any um, questions? Council Lady Evans. 
I was looking over your information and I see that you're good. It looks like you're fluent in Norwegian and I'm sorry, another language that now I cannot see from this distance, but um, it's kind of curious if your music um, career has kind of led you to other countries and uh, your performances. And um, if, you, if, if so, did you learn anything from Kind of having those experiences. Uh, yeah, yeah, I snack on Norsk. Uh, I speak Norwegian. Um, <laughs> I've not performed in Norway. Uh, there's a weird love of bluegrass in Norway. Uh, so actually my, my connection there is a good buddy of mine, Mikael uh, Jonasson, who lives in Oslo. Mikael, who's not tuning in because it's like three in the morning there. Um, but he's the one who kind of got me learning Norwegian. I visited them in Oslo. Uh, we went up to Svalbard, which is up by the North Pole, which is super cool. And the middle polar night did not see a polar bear, which was super disappointing. Um, as far as uh, performing outside of the country, no, I never have. Um, I've, I've been there just mostly for fun. Um, I toured with Tracy Lawrence. That might be on my resume. I'm not really sure for uh, a little under a year. I worked for him, so I drove around the country, but I never did any international trips with him. Uh, I'd love to. So if there are any promoters watching from afar in, in Norway, please hire me. Well, you'll be able to um, get this link um, from Channel 3, our YouTube, and you'll be able to send that out. I, I, I wouldn't even know what to say. <laughs> Um, any questions, uh, Councilman Pulley? Thank you, Madam Chair. This question probably has little to do with your qualifications to do what you're doing, but when you said it, I have to ask you. Um, you're one credit shy of a master's in music? That is correct, yeah, and the, the term to actually graduate has expired. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it took my parents a long time to really kind of understand that I thought this was a good decision. They've come around. <laughs> uh, to be fair, part of that decision was I was living in New York City. I was going to NYU. Uh, I didn't have the money to continue, and I said I'm going to move back to Nashville because I liked it there. So in uh, 2012, uh, I, I dropped out of NYU and moved back to Nashville and started working. Almost wish you to call me. I'd have loaned you the money so you could finish that one credit. Oh, it would have been a massive mistake. You would, <laughs> I would not return on that investment well at all. Oh, oh, I just had to ask. I'm sorry. No, no, he's it's honest. Okay. He's honest. So we'll take that. I actually, I, I will say, I really enjoy the fact that I dropped out one credit shy because that goes way further in conversation than actually graduating. People just go, oh, okay, but one credit shy, you get a whole See conversation that. out of it. <laughs> the greatest talking point ever. Yeah, I was not thinking about that when I dropped out, but it has turned out to be a, a nice little benefit of having dropped out. <laughs> An expensive talking point, I'm, I'm sure. Um, any, other, any other questions, comments? All right, with that, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Any against? Any um, extension? Ex gosh, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm done. Anybody not voting? All right, thank you. Uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Cool, thanks guys, appreciate it. All right, with that, we have Thomas, who's going to say his last name for me when he gets to the mic. Oh, that's okay. Good evening, council members. What's your last name? Oh, I was getting there. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, we've, had, we've had a lot of interesting and well-qualified candidates, so I'm honored to just be here and, and be nominated. My name's Thomas Oliverio, and I was nominated by Council Member Gamble, um, of my District 3 representative, primarily because I've spent the last 11 years based in Nashville, working in all three areas of this commission, in music, in TV film, and live events. I'm an active songwriter and a music producer, as well as a backstage, a backstage touring professional, working across 42 states and four countries, serving some of Nashville's most commercially successful artists. I'm a TV and film producer, a production manager, and a location scout with over 60 credits, including the Food Network, Showtime, and the Travel Channel. Currently, I'm working on bringing a fully funded Hollywood feature film to Nashville for production. I served as the production coordinator of the Nashville Christmas Parade for three years, in addition to the CMA Award Show, CMA Festival, and the Country Christmas Program. In my community of White's Creek, 
I authored a, a book that was released by Arcadia Publishing, and I also organized the 2022 White's Creek Block Party, which was a hoot. I was recently accepted to Nashville School of Law to focus on ways I can further assist our community and recently interviewed for a media studies instructor role at Belmont. So last year, I earned 22 TV film production credits. Uh, I served as a production coordinator for a Carrie Underwood video. Weeks before that, I served as a first assistant director for a 7-Eleven commercial which featured Morgan Freeman as the narrator. And I also served as a location manager for a David Yerman branded content um, photo shoot with the artist Kane Brown. Another highlight was managing the production of four music videos, one of which was nominated for CMT Video of the Year in a few months ago. So those are some qualifications to serve on this committee. Great, thank you so much. Do you have questions from the council? Council Lady Evans. Um, you, you listed several uh, um, events that you worked on and things that you've worked on in the community, which I really appreciate. And what, uh, bringing kind of your, um, your background and experience that you have to the community side of what your talents are, you know, what did you find to be the most challenging in like producing the book or any of the other examples that you provided where you were kind of engaged with, with bringing folks together? Thank you for your question. Well, it's certainly a challenge as someone who is currently working in this industry, currently freelancing, currently um, trying to source work for myself and also all the talented people in our entertainment community, one of my favorite things to do is hire local crew. So typically I serve as a liaison between say production companies working out of New York and LA and they hire me to help them find the best hotel rooms, tell them where to go eat dinner, who's the camera operator, who's the sound mixer. So I kind of um, concierge the productions. And a challenge is that we work on this high level. We might work on a, you know, CMT video of the year, but then once production wraps, you have to wait 30 days to get paid. Sometimes they're late, net 30, net 45. And then you have to get back to the drawing board and find the next job. And so I'm trying to transition into a way where I can help serve the community by maybe teaching um, our students to how to be better prepared for that aspect of the business because it's it's the easy part is when we're on set the the difficult part is the in between and when you get in the groove you don't really think hey you know what's going to happen in two months when this TV show wraps and leaves town a lot of times we just get a um, a temporary a feature, maybe a food show rolls through town, maybe a bachelorette weekend show. And I'd like to see more long-term opportunities here in town, like feature films. Can you promise us not to work on any bachelorette um, encouraging entertainment in the future? If elected, I will make sure that that goes away. <laughs> I'm staunchly against party mobiles yes. and yes. unfortunately have to avoid Broadway most of the time these days. But, you know, I've also performed at many of the venues in town as a musician. And um, there is still... The heart of Nashville is, is still here, but if we um, aren't careful, it could disappear, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. Any other um, questions, comments? Okay, all right, I've got a motion, I have a second. All those in favor? Any against, any abstentions? Thank you, we'll see you Tuesday. Um, I would say best of luck to our 
two uh, nominees that are left here. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a motion to defer Malisha Edwards to our meeting. I know y'all have slotted, but um, I guess as chair, I'm taking a little bit of privilege. Malisha is at a film festival currently and has been in flight all afternoon to try to get here and then was flying back to the film festival. So I think that um, qualifies to get a slot Tuesday. So um, I move to defer Malisha Edwards to our meeting, which is on some, what what day are we? This coming Tuesday, what day of the week is it? I mean, what? The 20th. The 20th. <laughs> Thank you. The 20th. Okay. okay. The 20th. All right. All in, I have a motion. I have a second. Any, all in favor? Any against? Any abstentions? All right, thank you. And what should we do with people who no showed? So I think there might be two. Okay. Reached out. Okay. All right, so we've got two more who, um, who've reached out, and so we'll let them come on Tuesday. And then committee, what do we want to do about people who no showed? Council Lady Evans. Uh, well, I guess I kind of wonder is it, would it then be the person that nominated's responsibility to follow up and take onus on that since there's several? Well, we've ha we've got the ones from council that no showed. We have people from council who no showed and then we have people from, that were nominated by the entertainment industry who's who have no showed. Now, now, Council Lady Stiles did point out that potentially some people didn't, and we've heard that before. Council Lady Hancock, what, what do you think? I bet you still on, Council Lady Evans. Um, I, I think that if they sh end up showing up on Tuesday because they didn't get this message in time, then we should um, honor that because that was the original date they thought they were coming. Uh, okay, Rosenberg, what do you think? I still have everybody's mics on. I mean, I guess I'm curious what the message communicated was because if, if some of the people that were here today really inconvenienced themselves because they thought this was the only chance to get here, I mean, normally if today's the day, then today's the day. I'm curious why accommodations were originally made for some people to come on the 20th, but not others, and the way it was communicated to nominees or, or the, what the message was that was communicated to nominees. Admin table. Gotcha. Uh, we, we did send out a, an email on uh, Friday the 8th that um, said the 15th was going to be the date for uh, the interviews. Um, we did uh, internally decide to reserve a few slots for Tuesday the 20th, and those filled up very fast. So we didn't really widely communicate that those slots were available just as a, you know, that kind of first come, first serve. Right, right, it's for people that communicated that they couldn't be here tonight. So, okay, so the, it's folks who communicated before tonight. I mean, I I don't have a strong feeling I would lean towards if you didn't show up or communicate in any way, then, you know, no call, no show, you know, then, I don't know, bummer. Council <laughs> Do you have a, I didn't, I of course got here a little late and I don't have a count of how many people were no-shows. Do you have one that you can share? So of the, um, of the entertainment at large, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 no-shows. Of the elected or nominated by council members, we had one, two, three-ish. Well, the last person, no contact information received, so ish. I mean, I think, I mean, clearly council members probably since there, there seems to be less no-shows from council member nominees, so council members probably, but the general public, there are a lot of no-shows. Uh, Tanya, hold on just a second, let me find you again. 
Everybody's mic's on except for Rutherford's. Oh, okay. Do we have enough um, folks for each category? Yes. What's our committee schedule look like on, on very packed. Monday's a holiday, y'all. Which is why we did this. Yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. I mean, if all these people showed up. Yeah, I mean, I, th I thought that this had been communicated uh, much uh, with much less notice than it actually was. It was communicated almost a week in advance. And if they didn't reply at all and give us any indication as to their schedule, I think that we should just move on. So would that be a motion to withdraw people who did not show? or disapprove people who did not show. Yes, motion to disapprove people who did not show unless they previously communicated with the clerk for another date. Are they, they could be considered withdrawn if they no-showed in our rules. I think if we're going that route, the motion would probably just be not to hear these folks at our Tuesday meeting and. All right, so rule 50 um, withdraws them if they no showed. Okay, so I think no show, no communication that rule 50 applies. Council Lady Evans. Will we be communicating with them to tell them not to come? Yes, I can, I can send that communication to, to everyone on the list that did not appear. Great, thank you. All right, so we don't need a motion on these, correct? Rule 50, Rule 50 takes, takes precedent there. All right, so done with that portion of our evening. Let's quickly touch on um, item number 50, which is proposed rules of procedure changed. So the state legislature in all their wisdom does not have to hear from the general public um, in ways that they have us now required to hear from the general public. I like hearing from the general public. Um, we have this already kind of taken care of, uh, but the legislature, as usual, in its infinite wisdom, saw fit to direct us how to do our business even more. So with that, um, we are amending our rules to kind of put some guidelines to make sure that people are being heard. And so any feedback on the proposed amendment so we can comply with federal law or state law in a orderly fashion. All right, seeing none. Hearing none, all those in support, all those against, all those protesting. <laughs> Protest vote yes, uh, anybody not voting. All right, that takes care of that. And now I will entertain a motion to be dismissed. You are dismissed, go home. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.